The topic today is comedic villains in film. On this episode of The Good, The Bad, and The Funny, that's a working title, here on Guru Hub. Failing to file a TPS report with a cover sheet is never really something to laugh about. Well, it wasn't, at least, until Office Space came out. That was mainly thanks to the perfect delivery by Bill Lumberg, played by Gary Cole. He's the smug, douchey boss most people have faced at some point in their career. A lot of people probably can't relate to the whole building burning to the ground over a swing line stapler, but we can certainly laugh at the misfortunes of Lumberg. It still upsets me to this day that Emperor's New Groove didn't reach the same levels of praise the other Disney properties have. It is the funniest film the company has put out by a mile. Eartha Kitt as Yzma, the diabolical, scary beyond all reason villain of the picture, is a blast to watch as she plots and schemes with her idiot henchman Kronk, voiced by Patrick Warburton. Do yourself a favor, watch this movie immediately. 1987 Spaceballs continues to be just as relevant today as it ever has been before, as Disney continues to pump out new Star Wars flicks every single year. Rick Moranis as Dark Helmet is the main reason to return to this film. His novelty-sized headwear complements his completely stupid, self-conscious character. I think it's time for Moranis to come out of retirement and make that sequel we all deserve. Spaceballs, The Last Schwartz. Regina George is that awful type of person most have crossed paths with in high school. The hot, backstabbing leader of the plastics, played by Rachel McAdams, is all sorts of fetch. She can dance, she can flirt, she can rock a mean diet, and definitely knows how to put together one hell of a scrapbook. It's a shame she couldn't hear loud, fast-moving objects. Seriously, Hollywood, how often do you think this happens in real life? There's been like a thousand instances on screen of unsuspecting people in the middle of the road getting hit by fast moving vehicles. Don't believe me? Here's a fast montage. Joan Cusack puts in one of the most criminally underrated villain performances as Debbie Jelinski, aka Black Widow, in Adam's Family Values. This is an amazing sequel for many reasons, but the curvy femme fatale takes it to another level from the first. The fact that she has a slideshow showcasing her previous victims is demented enough. Killing her parents over a Malibu Barbie? Well, that's just good old-fashioned crazy. Crazy in the funniest way possible. That's not what I wanted. That's not who I was. I was a ballerina. Graceful, delicate. They had to go. Evil fashion diva Mugatu is so hot right now. Zoolander's antagonist is part of an underground organization plotting to assassinate the Prime Minister of Malaysia by brainwashing male models to do their dirty deeds. It's complex, it's dumb, but that's where Mugatu likes to live. And it's absolutely no dumber than dying in a freak gasoline fight. He deserves our respect though. The man invented the piano key necktie. He invented it! Nobody makes White Goodman bleed his own blood. Nobody. Ben Stiller has played some real gems before, but the Globo gym owner and professional dodgeball player is about as good as it gets. Sporting a killer handlebar mustache and an entourage of American Gladiator rejects makes him the perfect adversary. Adversary. Am I saying that right? There's nobody over there. You just know Shooter McGavin was one of those guys in college who wore four layers of polos, all with their collars popped up. This guy goes from class to ass very quickly in Happy Gilmore. Christopher McDonald descends into madness with little temper tantrums and rhyming threats. You better be careful what you say, or you'll pay. As a bonus, we have another great Ben Stiller role as a sadistic orderly running an old lady quilting sweatshop. This is handmade quality sh** we're talking about here. My fingers hurt. Oh, well, oh. now your back's gonna hurt because you just pull landscaping duty. Hmm. Anybody else's fingers hurt? I didn't think so. The amount of times I've seen Home Alone 1 and 2 is definitely equal to the amount of bones Harry and Marv have broken due to McAllister's traps. I mean, any one of the many scenarios they are involved in would have killed a normal person, but not these two. They keep taking the hits, even when they're at the end of their literal rope. 
A perfectly kicked football to the groin has been funny since the dawn of time. Home Alone movies expand that premise to involve paint cans, staple guns, blow torches, and whatever else this twisted child can conjure up. And Pesci and Stern sell that pain every single time. The details of Dr. Evil's life are quite inconsequential. He went to evil medical school and wants to take over the world. It's pretty standard, really. Mike Myers manages to not only make Dr. Evil one of the most memorable and funny villains of all time, but also one that overshadows the lead, Austin Powers, who's also played by Mike Myers, so he's overshadowing himself. Dr. Evil's a visionary, which is impressive when you take into account his terrible upbringing. His father would womanize, he would drink, he'd make outrageous claims like he invented the question mark. Sometimes he'd accuse chestnuts of being lazy. All that said, Dr. Evil created an empire, raised a child during adolescence, and made sure his cat, Mr. Bigglesworth, only had the fanciest of feasts. And, uh, I, I think he's pretty groovy. This is just a sampling of the many great villains in comedies, and I asked Twitter and Facebook for their thoughts. They, they gave me some. Noah Spence has zero hesitation picking Syndrome from The Incredibles. Zlander gives Big Earn the win. Bill Murray from Kingpin is a great pick. He was just shy of making my list. Caleb's pick is for the Fairy Godmother from Shrek 2. The Fairy Godmother from Shrek 2. You have to live with that choice, Caleb. It's not mine to judge. <laughs> Thank you for watching this episode of The Fast and the Funniest. That's a working title. Let's end with a little bit more Dr. Evil. We hold the world ransom for 100 billion dollars.